Today we're heading to Modern to see if we can make our opponent super miserable by locking them out of the game and killing all their stuff with Mono White Prison. We've got a limited edition Commander playmat for sale, only available until the end of July. You can get regular Stitch or Gold Foil signatures from the entire Commander Clash crew, and you can pre-order it now over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of much ado about nothing and this week we are heading to modern to play some prison but with a twist we are playing mono white prison or mono white control this deck is pretty sweet so let's talk about what this weird deck is trying to do jump into a modern league and see it in action so when i think of prison decks I think of Blood Moon, I think of Mono Red Prison. When I think of Control Decks, I think of Blue Decks and Counter Spells. Well, our deck has none of those things, but it's definitely like a Prison or Control Style deck. So we start off with our big Prison piece, Chalice of the Void. We're mostly trying to put this on one, and it's really good against certain decks. Against like, is it Murktide? It locks out a huge chunk of their deck. Against Hammer Time, it locks out all their important pieces. There are some bad matchups. You run into like a Tron deck or something, and it's not great, and we can sideboard it out. But this is our big lock piece. So we want to start the game on turn two, Chalice on one. We got nothing in our deck it can really counter. Then we have an absurd amount of removal. Pretty much all of it exiles, all of our target removal at least. We have Ratchet Bomb, Wrath of God as sweepers, March Otherworldly Light, Skyclave Aberration, Wandering Emperor, Solitude, all this targeted exile based removal. So once we stick our Chalice and lock one mana spells out of the game, then we just kind of kill everything that our opponent plays. And then one of the upsides of all these removal spells is many of them also turn into creatures like Solitude can beat down, Skyclave can beat down, Wandering Emperor can be removal or make threats, so we combine our removal creatures with stuff like the Restoration of Ajano, Timeless Dragon, which also helps fix our mana, and Stoneforge Mystic grabbing Calder Batter Skull to actually close out the game. So lock up the game with Chalice of the Void, kill all your stuff, eventually find a finisher to close out the game in a few attacks. Mana base wise, pretty simple mono white stuff, one Amiria, it's kind of just a free roll, Field of Ruin to deal with Tron deck, some Creature Lands, a Mistville Planes. In our sideboard, we do get a Wrath of God and a Fragmentize, but most of our stuff is kind of targeted at specific matchups. Stony Silence, Kataki for Artifact decks, Deafening Silence and Damping Sphere for Storm Style combo decks, also Tron decks, Even Mind Sensor for Primeval Titan decks, Rest in Peace for Graveyard decks, Core Firewalker for Red decks, and that is Mono White Prison for Modern. That's our much improved for this week. So let's jump into a league, see it in action. Can Mono White Prison actually work? Can you prison people without Blood Moon? Can you control people without counter spells? That's what we're gonna find out today. Thanks for watching everyone. Enjoy the gameplay and out. I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Looking to pick up some sweet, sweet Double Masters 2022 reprints Why prices are cheap? Well, you can snag them all from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Much brew about nothing time. We are moderning this week with some mono white prison. Normally when I think of prison, I think of uh, blood moons. This is mono white prison with a bunch of uh, restoration of Ajanos, apparently. I mean, this hand looks fine. This is not really an Amiria deck. We have one Amiria, but we're not really we're not really built around Amiria. It's kind of just for uh for value. We're really kind of a, a stone blade deck. I'm interested to see how good these these sagas are. I mean, it's a lot of value. Opponent. I wonder this might actually just be good in a in a straight up Amiria deck. Wrath of God. Well, <laughs> let's play a non-planes land. Opponent. Is it Murktide, maybe? Probably. It's weird they haven't done anything yet. I mean, it could be Death Shadow. Opponent, Dragon Rage, Shanala. Passes. We draw planes. I mean, we should probably just snipe the DRC, right? Actually, we could try to wait in Wrath next turn. That might even be better. Although this does give our opponent a turn of using the graveyard. I mean, we kind of want our opponent to, we kind of want our opponent to play another creature and then get them both with a wrath. They could have spell pierce. I mean, this is, let's take the safe line. Skyclave, get rid of the DRC. Also nice that it exiles, not a card in the graveyard for Murktides. We're probably gonna need the, the wrath to, to get rid of a Murktide eventually. Opponent, Express of Iteration. All right, opponent digging for lands. Express of Iteration, good for finding them. Finds one, plays one. Mishra's bobble, cracks the bobble, and 
Yeah, it's in for one. All right, I mean, now I guess we're playing Restoration, unless we draw something. Still a little worried about getting Spell Pierce, but uh, play the land. I mean, if we wait, we can play around Spell Pierce. I mean, I guess we need to get it out of their hand if they have it. Restoration of Ijanu. If they Spell Pierce this, it's a Spell Pierce that's not countering our Wrath after they play Murktide. All right, resolves. All right, so grab a Plains and pass the turn. Oh, I actually, I forgot about this card. This actually seems so good in Emiria. This seems like built for blue white Emiria. It works with Sun Titan. It gets planes for Emiria. Seems like perfect. Opponent goes to combat, gets and hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Down to 18. And is it time? They only have two spells in their graveyard. All right, here comes a Murktide. It's a 5-5, five, five, leaving up counter magic. Discard a planes, get back the planes, play a planes, and pass the turn. So I think what we need to, oh boy. Yeah, they're definitely representing counter spell. All right, pass the turn. Uh, more expressive iterations. So I think what we gotta try to do, and this is probably gonna end up costing us our saga, which is a bummer, but I think what we wanna do is Wandering Emperor. If that gets countered, that hopefully clears away for Wrath of God. The good news is, I mean, long term, Long term, Amiria is actually not that far away from coming online. Not that we have many creatures, but opponent goes to combat and gets in, gets in. Well, uh, Wandering Emperor, counter spell, I assume. Oh, there's the spell pierce. All right, sure. Well, we take a beating. Down to 12. Opponent passes, gets to draw another card. Even more planes, flip the saga. Apply the land, uh, Wrath of God. And. I mean, I guess we play another one. Do you have another Spell Pierce? Wow, okay. Usually the deck only plays two Spell Pierces, but opponent found them both. Well, this is kind of a sketchy spot now. Opponent untaps, tap land, draws two, so many counters. Well, our opponent should be out of Spell Pierces, but doesn't look like they're out of Merc Tides. Feels like another Merc Tide coming down. Yeah, that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, uh, let's draw a Solitude, please. March of Otherworldly Light. Five, six, <laughs> I think this actually works. <laughs> Not efficient, but technically legal. Eight mana, kill your two drop, go. All right, two Merc Tides down, two Merc Tides down. Now for the Dash Fragavad. All right, opponent's passing. Another March of Otherworldly Light. Well, play the land. Now we just want really any creatures because we actually, we actually really truly managed to turn on Emiria. We just, we got only a Skyclave in the graveyard at this point. Bonus defense down to 15. Oh my goodness, another expressive iteration. It never ends. The card draw never ends. Bonus, Drake and Rage Channel. Ah. And Dragon Rage Channeler. Opponent passes. Well, okay. Get back to the Skyclave. Get rid of the Dragon Rage Channeler. March of Otherworldly Light. Okay. This is fine. <laughs> I mean, this just puts the Skyclave back in the graveyard so we can get it back again. Opponent gets a token. They lose the Dragon Rage Channeler. We pass the turn. We really need, we really, really, really just need like a Stone Forge, some sort of creature. Opponent, Ledger Shredder. It's in, hits us for one. We will take it. Well, the Skyclive is doing, doing the Lord's work here. <laughs> get it back. Get rid of the Ledger Shredder this time. Well, restoration. We will play it. Resolves, get a planes, and yeah, I mean, we'll just play it, I guess. Pass the turn. Unholy hit, he gets back the token. I mean, I guess they are slowly sort of getting us with tokens. We might have to try to use the Cave of the Frost Dragon here to block. Opponent goes to combat. How many unholy heats are they down? Two. So you definitely have another one. Well, Cave of the Frost Dragon. This is a good turn to do it though, because if it dies, then we can potentially reanimate it. Unholy heat. Okay. So we dropped to eight. Was thinking about killing the bigger token, but still worried about another Merc Tide. We draw. We get to Amiria. Sure. Uh, nothing to target. Field of Ruin. Well, okay, we'll discard the Field of Ruin. Get back the Cave of the Frost Dragon. 
Pass the dirt. Chalice of the Void actually seems like it'd be good against our opponent's deck. Ottawa. I mean, I think we gotta do this, unfortunately. A little weak to another Merc Tide, but we we don't want to drop low enough that we die to two Lightning Bolts. Opponent bounces a Skyclave, untaps, no more Merc Tides. We're in a really bad spot if our opponent draws a Merc Tide. Draw some cards. I mean, they're gonna find it eventually because our opponent's just drawing their entire deck. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent gets and hits us down to seven. The grind, the grind, the grind. Down to seven, opponent passes. Wandering Emperor's nice. Well, we get to flip the saga. Pass the turn. We're gonna hold on to the Skyclave. Pass the turn. This is the last Unholy Heat. Archmage's Charm to draw two cards. Yeah, let's do this now then. While your opponents tap down, Wandering Ember, make a Samurai. Opponent untaps. Considers. Oh, the Merc Tide's coming. The Merc Tide's coming. There's no way it cannot be coming because our opponents just, they're, they're down to 21 cards in their deck. They have drawn them all. About it. Ah, oh, Solitude would be so helpful here. Here comes Merc Tide Regent. That's not great. That's an 8-8. Ragavan. Yeah, we might be in trouble. Opponent passes. We draw another planes. Well, Skyclave. Opponent counters. Tick up. I mean, we gotta trust that this Cave of the Frost Dragon can block for a turn routes so we die. Oh, this has been a, a long and grindy game. Opponent cracks a Scalding Tarn. We just never hit a payoff, really. We never hit a hit a Stone Forge to get an equipment going. And our opponent just drew until they found three Merc Tides. We answered the first two, but the third one, opponent land one card in hand. I mean, if they can kill the Cave of the Frost Dragon, then we lose. All right, opponent passes. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Get back the Skyclave. Get rid of the Ragavan. Ratchet Bomb. Well, that's gonna take a lot of upticks. I'll tick up. Pass the turn. Oh, this is a, a fragile, fragile position. Plays a land, can draw a card with it. Combat. Here they, oh, they drew the Unholy Heat. Probably drew the Unholy Heat. Oh, uh, we got through three of them. And there is number four. All right, all right, all right. Well, that was awkward. We never drew, we never drew a payoff and our opponent had forever to, to draw through their deck, which is uh, not, not ideal, not ideal. What do we have that's actually good against this deck? Rest in peace for sure. And probably go down a couple ratchet bombs. Yeah, we just, oh, Chalice would be so helpful. We ended up drawing a ton of lands that game. Considering the number that are in our deck, we just drew so many. Yeah, never found a Solitude or a Stoneforge. I would say those are probably our two most important cards, honestly. We did accidentally end up turning on uh, our one Amiria, which was kind of funny. Hey, run it back, run it back. All right, opponent, what do you got, what do you got, what do you got? All right, we get to play first, and well, we're gonna keep this. This hand has all the cards we didn't draw last game. <laughs> got the Stoneforge, got the Solitude. Still no Chalice. Chalice would actually be like super good against our opponent's deck. Solitude's nice. Solitude is a nice clean answer to uh, to our opponent having a Murktide Regent. Opponent, Ragavan. Play the land, Stoneforge Mystic. Grab a Batter Skull. The real question is, if our opponent kills this, oh, what do we do? I really don't want to get hit by Ragavan. We might have to pitch the Solitude, which feels not great. Opponent goes to combat. Oh, well, if we get to block, we'll just block with Stoneforge, I think. This means we're not putting Batter's Skull into play this turn, but it also means we're not getting hit by Ragavan, which is big. Scalding Tarn for our opponent, and... Passes, well, planes and restoration of Asiano. All right, opponent's gonna counter this, which is fine. This clears the way for our other things to resolve, hopefully. Steam vents untapped. Well, next turn, hopefully, we can get down this rest in peace. Rest in peace is gonna make Murktide a lot worse. A lot worse. And we can get it down before the Murktide can come down, which is huge. Ledger Shredder and Dragon Rage Shunala. Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. And a bobble. So now I think we actually just wrath. We wrath, the downside of wrathing 
is that it means our opponent could play a Merc Tide. However, hopefully Solitude can clean it up. So opponent draws a card, we play a land. Yeah, I mean, we're just we're just gonna wrath them away. Wrath away the board, pass the turn. Oh, we'd love to find Chalice. Chalice would be so good in this matchup. Opponent untaps, passes. Well, let's pass the turn. Yeah, let's pass the turn in Flash and Wandering Emperor. Opponent, gonna draw a couple cards. Yep. Untaps. Ottawa, passing. Oh, Wandering Ember. Another counter? All right, counter spell. Well, we will untap. The question is really, when do we rest in peace? Yeah, I think we play it here. Rest in peace resolves. Oh, and then this is a little bit of a non-bow, but we're gonna play in cycle. We don't get to put the dragon into play, but I think this is still fine. We'll just get the Mistville Plains out of the way. Play the Mistville Plains, pass the turn. This gets us enough mana to start casting Batter Skulls and Solitudes. And it also means that we shouldn't have to worry about Murktide being a real threat. As long as the, the rest in peace sticks around, opponent. What do you got? Ledger Shredder passes. Yeah, let's just pass. <laughs> See what our opponent does. Land, combat, gets in for one. And let's march of otherworldly light. Get rid of the ledger shredder. Uh, all right, planes, we'll play the planes and pass the turn. <laughs> opponent knows about the batter skull, so in theory, in theory, they probably are trying to wait and counter it. Land for our opponent. Don't really want to run out Solitude for no value. Ooh, all right. That we like. Chalice on one. Ratchet Bomb. We're playing it slow, but we're locking our boat. I mean, we're getting there. You can see the prison part of the deck. We got the rest in peace. We got the Chalice on one. We can take up Ratchet Bomb to seven. <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. So opponent did not counter the chalice on one, but countered the ratchet bomb. That's odd. I would assume it'd be the other way around. Field of Ruin. I'll play Field of Ruin. Uh, we only really have one shot with this batter skull. Pass the turn. We can't miss Phil Plains it back. Opponent going to pass. Well, let's Field of Ruin. Strip mine. Strip mine. Nope. <laughs> Opponent's got the island. Ooh, Wandering Emperor. Okay. Well, pass the turn. We got the stuff to finish out the game. We just need to find the window to resolve it. Yeah, let's wait. All right, Cave of the Frost Dragon. That's a, that's a threat. That's a threat. That's a way we can potentially damage our opponent. Opponent down to 14. Steam heads tapped, untapped. Bobble, sure. Cracks it. I mean, opponent has a lot of cards they can't really cast with the chalice out. Oh, that's Wandering Emperor. Wow, no counter. Okay, uh, Samurai. Well, now we're actually in the kill him plan. Opponent gets to draw a card. Cave of the Frost Dragon. Take up, hit ya. I mean, most of our opponent's removal should be shut down by this chalice, I think. No bolts, no unholy heats. Opponent, down to 11, down to eight. Well, I mean, yeah, let's, let's Stoneforge. Counter it if you want. And opponent does want. Oh, they're gonna, okay, they steal the Samurai. Well, we will take Calder complete, pass the turn. I mean, this is, I think we're, we should be good, right? We should be good. The Samurai can kill the Wandering Emperor. And opponent scoops it up. Okay, that was, that was much better. That's kind of what we envisioned. The Chalice of the Void was huge. The Rest in Peace was huge. Our removal was good. Even Mind Sensor? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we could bring in Firewalker. It just, you know what? Let's bring in Firewalker. Is Ratchet Bomb good? They do have a couple ones. Yeah. Let's Firewalker. Firewalker is probably just better. And run it like that. Well, that was nice. You can see the difference when we actually hit our, our prison pieces and a finisher, which is mostly what we were lacking in game one. Opponent's on the play this game, which is frightening. All right, we'll keep this. Calder Complete's not great, but I do like the Chalice. We got a Skyclave. Dragon Rage Shunla. Okay, with the Frost Dragon. Go. Don't really want to pitch a card here to kill it. We could if we had to, but opponent. Flooded Strand. Gets in, hits us. Down to 19. Passes. Well, Cave of the Frost Dragon. Yeah, I think we wait. This turn we can March of Otherworldly Light. Opponent cracks. Flooded Strand. Steam Vents. Untapped. Considers. So it seems like our opponent has Spell Pierce. 
And we don't have a great way to play around it. Leaves the card on top. Oh, well, okay. If they're just going to keep considering. In that case, we will uh, <clears throat> get rid of this Dragon Rage Channeler. All right, so opponent fill in the graveyard. The good news is we do have multiple, multiple solitudes. Not enough white cards to, to pitch them all, but. All right, opponent fill in the graveyard. Doing some considering. Island. Murktide Regent. All right, untap. We draw Stoneforge. I'll play the land. Do we chalice on one? Or do we try to wait? I mean, we gotta kill the Murktide. Yeah, let's chalice. I'm expecting a spell pierce, but chalice on one. Yeah, opponent's got the spell pierce, which is a bummer. Well, we will solitude. Pitching Stoneforge. Get rid of the Murktide. Well, we dealt with it. Would have been nice if we could get the chalice down, but pass the turn about it adapts. Tempted to keep the stone forge there, but I feel like we want this skyclave. Rest in peace. Well, I mean, we're gonna play it. Nuke the graveyards, pass the turn. If we had the chalice down, this would feel a lot like last game. Still worried about the stupid monkey. Ledger shredder. Lightning bolts are face to connive. Well, Skyclave can answer the ledger shredder for now. Would be nice if we could hit lands. Abuna passes. Restoration of Ijiano. Oh, uh, what are the odds they got another spell pierce? Not that high, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we just gotta do it. Skyclave, get rid of ledger shredder. Pass the turn. Opponent. Bobble, sure. I mean, without the Murktide, our opponent's deck does get less scary. Like, that's their big payoff. Opponent gets to draw a card. We need to hit lands. Okay, there's a land. Well, go to combat. Get in, hit ya. Play the land. Play Restoration of Ajano. Are we getting countered? No. Okay. Well, this is good. This gets us another land, and this gets us to Solitude Mana, which is super sweet. Opponent. Unholy Heat gets the token. Sure, sure, sure. All right, well, game on. A on untaps. Next, we're mean flash in solitude, and eventually, oh, dash Dragomon. Okay, annoying, annoying. A bonnet gets and hits us for four. Gets a treasure. Hopefully, they don't steal anything too good. All right, steals a planes. Picks up the stupid monkey. Oh, chalice of the void. Uh, no discard. Play the land. Ragavan to unknown cards. All right, I think the plan is, oh, hopefully this works. I think the plan is try to solitude Ragavan. If that eats a counter, then at least we get to untap in hopefully Chalice, expressive iteration. So opponent gonna draw some cards. We're also gonna get to flip this restoration, which is nice. I feel like we're actually not in that bad of shape here. So opponent finds a, exiles a lightning bolt. Okay, so they're probably bolting our Face land Ragavan goes to combat. Well, okay. One, two, three, four, solitude. Do you have the counter spell? Yes. All right, so there's a counter spell, but this I think is still kind of okay. So they get a treasure, they gotta pick up Ragavan, but this should mean we get down the chalice of the void on one. Steal a restoration, can't cast it. And chalice should oh no, is it? Bolts are face to five. All right. Scary, scary times, scary times. So opponent picks up the Ragavod. We get to flip our saga. We draw core firewalker, which is nice ish. Well, chalice on one. Stop these Ragavon shenanigans. Core firewalker. Pass the turn. Oh, this combo should be pretty good. This should be pretty good at keeping us alive. Opponent land. Passes. Ooh, Stoneforge is sweet. Well, go to combat, get in, hit ya. Mega Spirit, down to 18. All right, is your last unknown card a counter for Stoneforge? No. Well, we'll snag our Batter Skull past the turn. Are we about to take down the best deck in modern? I think we are. I think we might be. Oh, and opponent scoops it up. Opponent scoops it up. All right, that was good. That was actually really good. We got to see the saga power. We got to see the prison power. Eh, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Might not be quite the same as blood muting someone, but mono white prison worked that game. And honestly, in this matchup, 
I think we'd much rather have a, a mono white chalice of the void deck with a bunch of removal than a blood man. Isn't Murktide does not care much about the blood man, but well, that was sweet. Opponent, this was not even a case where our opponent just like ran bad or something. They had Murktides and Ragavons and the whole thing, and we just kept with them. So, well, all right. Sweet, 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 sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some mono white prison <laughs> in modern, and yeah, that sounds pretty good, I think. I mean, as long as we can land for restoration. I mean, it'll depend on the matchup. If our skyclaves are good, this is good. If our skyclaves are not good and our opponent's playing like combo, then it gets worse. Planes go. No companion, so it could be anything. Opponent. Undaps. Lethal Balloon. All right, so Skyclaves are probably decent. Oh no, just kidding. It's a Primeval Titan deck. Well, play Planes, Ratchet Bomb. All right, I mean, Ratchet Bomb can deal with Amulet, which is something. I guess there's a question as to whether, should we take it up? On Zero, it deals with, or, well, now we gotta take it up. It deals with Urza Saga stuff. Hopefully we don't lose right now. Opponent, Gruel Turf, untaps, floats mana, picks it up. Right of the Hills and Grove. And bounce land again. Untaps. Picks up. Oh, and explore. Ay, 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 ay. All right, all right, all right. Well, one of the downsides of being mono white prison is we don't actually have a, we don't have blood man. That is not a white card, unfortunately. We need a white blood man. All lands are planes. Another bounce land. Untaps, it picks up land. We'd really like to draw land here. Being able to skyclave this dryad rather than having to solitude it would be super helpful. Wandering Emperor. Yeah, this is a lot worse. Okay, so, I mean, I think we still have to kill the dryad. Oh, this is so painful. All right, get rid of the dryad. Sack the ratchet, Bob. Well, I mean, we've survived the first rush of stuff. If we don't hit lands though, we're gonna be in trouble. We really, really, really need the lands. Oh, second dryad. Land, land. Third dryad. Oh no, opponent passes. Land? All right, that is a land. Well, uh, one, two, three. Skyclave, a dryad. Pass the turn. Oh, this would have been so much better if we'd hit the land last turn and we could have skyclaved instead of having to spend the solitude. Opponent. Summoner's packed for the Primeval Titan. Plays the Primeval Titan. Now well, let's see what they get. Double Valica. Oh, it's a lot of damage. Okay. This is fine. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So opponent, we go to 11. We lose our skyclave. Opponent gets a token. Goes to combat, hits us to nine. Oh, we need, we gotta hit a land here. We gotta hit the land, gotta hit a land. Skyclave, well, I mean, this still kinda works. So we get to Skyclave, get rid of the Dryad. Solitude, pitch, restoration of a Jano. Get rid of the Primeval Titan. And pass the turn. So opponents gotta, they gotta pay for the fact. Which slows him down a bit. Opponent. Oh no, here's a saga. Goes to combat, gets in, hits us down to six. It's not a lot of life, not a lot of life. Land? Chalice, not the best chalice matchup. Well, blow up the Urza saga, get a land. Chalice on zero, pass the turn. I mean, uh, I guess we should have gotten in for two because we're not blocking. I mean, our, our hopes and dreams involve getting down this Wandering Emperor to, to snipe the illusion. This illusion that is killing us. Down to three. Opponent, Azusa, passes. Land, okay, we do draw the land. So play the land, pass the turn. Okay, we're, we're alive. We're not fully dead yet. Opponent goes to combat. Okay, so we get to block Azusa and then Wandering Emperor. Snipe the illusion. This also gets us technically out of bolt range. Up to five. Board kind of clean. Please not a primeval titan. Opponent passes. Okay. That would actually be sweet. Take up on Skyclave. Hit you for three. Okay. Okay. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. But it goes to 25. Watch that two points of damage we didn't get by attacking that one turn. Come back to haunt us. Land for batter skull would be super helpful. Opponent passes. Ratchet bomb. Well... Take up on the Skyclave. 
Go to combat. Hit you for four. The little Skyclave that could. And we'll play the Ratchet Bomb. Pass the turn. Plan for better skull. Opponent adapts. Skyclave is out of bolt range. Uh-oh. That's a Primeval Titan. That's a Primeval Titan. Okay, so now we have to draw an answer to Primeval Titan, or we're actually going to get fairly valicated, I think. Well, they're not trying to fairly valicate us. Bounce land, bounce land. Solitude. Solitude would be nice. Opponent passes. Restoration of Ijanu. Well, play Restoration. If we run out of luck, get the planes. Play the planes. Make a samurai. So now I guess we have to try to double block. Ooh, but opponent gets a ton of lands. All right, well, pass the turn. If they ever draw the last Dryad, we're just super dead. Larry West, Transmutes, or Summoner's Pact. Oh, they have Besaju in hand? Oh, all right, so that, that does do it. So now they just get to get the, they get to get the fourth Dryad. Summoner's Pact. Mm, our Chalice was actually doing work. Yeah, Dryad, and now we're dead. Well, I mean, we, we put up a pretty good fight considering how fast of a start our opponent got off to. Do we have anything in the sideboard that's actually good? Aven Mind Sensor is, uh, is potentially helpful. Uh, Damping Sphere, potentially helpful. I guess Fragmentize? What's bad? That's another question. So Wrath of God's not great. I feel like Chalice of the Void's not really good. It was okay on zero there, but we saw they have answers to it. They can tutor up anyway. All right, Aven Mind Sensor it is. Aven Mind Sensor, no one expects the Aven Mind Sensor in modern. Our hopes and dreams rest on the Mind Sensor. Well, okay, we got a Damping Sphere. That's not the, that's not the worst. That's not the worst. Don't have a good way to deal with a Urza's Saga at the moment. That's a, that's a concern, but we'll try it. Cave of the Frost Dragon, go. Keep in seven. Oh no, there's the Urza Saga. And the amulet. I'll play the land, and I guess we're on the, the Stoneforge plan here. Stoneforge Mystic. Grab. Calder complete. Pass the turn. Well, we'll see. Urza Saga. So Ratchet Bomb is in the deck mostly to deal with. There's, oh, double. Oh, God. Okay, that's, that is never what you want to see. So there's a chance we're dead right now, actually. Airless Tracker. All right, we're not dead right now, so that's good. We draw planes. Play the land. Wow, unfortunately, yeah, the risk is too high. We just got to play Damping Sphere. This is a bummer. This means we're not putting a Cauldron into play. We're not Restoration of a Janowing. With Triple Amulet potentially coming, I think we just lose if we don't play Damping Sphere. The, the chances of us just dying to Primeval Titan are so high. Cavern, our opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets a clue, cracks the map, but saves you to deal with the damping sphere. This is a, uh, this is not great. When it gets in, hits us. We draw planes, we'll play the planes. Skyclave. We get rid of one amulet. And pass the turn. In case our opponent uh, kills Besaju right away, then we can Stoneforge. Awkward that we haven't been able to get down this calder yet. Wow, they play the Besaju. Interesting. I don't know. Well, one more answer to an amulet would be super helpful. That would be good. The opponent goes to combat. Gets in hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Cracks the clue. Sure, 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 sure. Well, uh, if we don't draw an amulet answer, we do get to Restoration of a Jano plus Calder Complete. Wandering Emperor. Now yeah, we're going to wait on that. We're going to Stoneforge, Calder Complete. Restoration of a Jano, grab a planes. Hit you for seven. Okay, I mean, we're live. We're live, we're not dead yet. Pona goes to 13. What do they got? They do need to answer the damping sphere before they really go off. Like turning bounce lands into colorless lands that make one mana is kind of big. Not Blood Moon. Blood Moon's just, oh, so good against this deck, but it's, uh, it's still pretty decent against the bounce lands. And opponent's only on two mana at the moment. That's kind of not the, not the most. I mean, it's turn five. Normally by this time we would have been <laughs> dead to a primeval Titan. So we're, we're doing our job. We're slowing him down. What do you got opponent? What do you got? All right, another cavern on human. And so it's like another tracker. All right, more trackers. Opponent gets and hits us. Sure. 
So we go to nine. We draw Misville Plains. Well, we might as well discard that and reanimate it. Discard the Misville Plains. Get back the Misville Plains. Play the land. We could just cave. If we cave and attack for, with everything, but it takes three, eight, nine. But then we don't get to Wandering Emperor. I guess we also got to be aware of dying on the backswing. Let's go to combat. Attack, attack. I think we're going to leave back the Wandering Emperor for now. Well, maybe we just Wandering Emperor pump. Yeah, let's do that. Wandering Emperor pump. I think this is better. We get to kill a tireless tracker. We get to keep the Skyclave. Thanks to first strike, opponent goes to eight. And now there's a pretty good chance we have lethal next turn. Assuming nothing goes horribly awry, opponent untaps. Oh, hold, hold. Still not sure about Restoration of Vigiano. It's interesting, is it good? I really don't know. Okay, bad bounce land. Sure. Gets a clue. Picks up the land. I mean, they shouldn't be able to... Okay, they do have... Oh, all right. Besage you. Well, are we dead? How bad is it? Explore for an extra land drop. Oh, they picked up the Besage you. I see, I see. That makes sense. Besage you just like... Oh, it's had such a huge impact. I don't think it's... Well, it's a negative impact for me because I like blood mooning people. I don't know if it's a negative impact overall, but especially in these decks that can tutor up lands, it's so good. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent. Passing. Well, let's see if we can finish this game. So we flip the saga. We cave of the frost dragon. Pump on Stoneforge? Pump on Stoneforge, and then attack with everything. I mean, this should be, this should be enough. They don't even have red mana. Okay, cool. I mean, we dodge the Primeval Titan. That's so often what these matchups come down to. Do they draw Primeval Titan? <laughs> yes or no? Uh, in that case, the answer was no, and we <laughs> managed to win. Well, all right, let's do that again, hopefully. Pony had a weird draw. They drew all the tireless trackers, but nothing else, really. Awkward for our opponent, good for us. <laughs> we'll, we'll take all the non-Primeval Titan draws our opponent wants to throw at us. Do you think Primeval Titan is too good for modern? I think that's actually an interesting question. I think it's, it's it's gotta be on the fence. It's gotta be on the fence. I don't know if I'd say it's just, oh boy, it's close, it's close. Is it Primeval Titan? Is it Amulet? Is it Dryad? The sad thing about Primeval Titan is I really like the Titan cycle. The Titan cycle's so sweet. Like, I love Grave Titan. I love Sun, oh, Sun Titan's probably my favorite. Inferno Titan sweet, Frost Titan, the Titan Assassin is good. If it wasn't for Primeval Titan, well, that's actually interesting. We got the Damping Sphere and we can potentially answer Oh, this Misville Plains is actually super awkward with this hand. But we can answer the amulets. But one of the things that makes me sad about Primeval Titan being so strong is it means that they just probably will never reprint the cycle in standard. When if they... When if, uh, if Primeval Titan didn't exist, I could definitely see them... I could definitely see them, uh... Revisiting the cycle, like putting into Pioneer. They would all be really sweet in Pioneer, except for Primeval Titan would probably just be too good. There's the amulet. And a Valakut, which untaps. Tough decision. Stoneforge to get the clock going or March to get rid of Amulet. Like we Stoneforge this turn, next turn we can put Calder complete into play. I mean, we gotta, we're the, we're the prison deck. I think we gotta play it like the prison deck. I think we need to answer, answer our opponent's best threat. So get rid of the Amulet. I guess the other way to put this is next turn we can Stoneforge plus March something if we have to, ooh, okay. Well, all right, another new plan, a Damping Sphere. Pass the turn. This cuts off the the green mana. Urza Saga. Well, we'll march of otherworldly like that. About it. Passes. Bonus says we're killing them, and hopefully they're correct. Stoneforge. Alder complete. Go. We still got another march left over, too. Oh my goodness, is opponent passing? Is opponent passing? Is opponent passing? Are we gonna beat the Primeval Titan deck? Oh my god, opponent's gonna hate this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got him! <laughs> no Urza Saga will live on our watch. Oh, it passes. <laughs> I'm playing the land. Stoneforge Mystic. But Cauldra complete into play. Play a Stoneforge Mystic. Nothing to tutor up. Hit you with the germ. We might actually have a shot. Boy, this, this prison plane is kind of working. Oh. Ouch, okay. Well, that's a bummer. That slows us down quite a bit. 
delicate returns of how it passes. Now, all right, plan damping sphere. Just to be safe, hit you with a stone forge. Opponent goes to 15. This means that one Basaju doesn't ruin our day. Kinda lucky to draw two of two Basaju's. Opponent, cavern on Dryad. Ooh, all right. This is gonna fix the colors of mana. Are we gonna get there in time? Opponent. Oh, this is also gonna turn on the Valakids pretty soon. Well, Batter Skull. Untap. Removal. Field of Ruin. Play the land. Go to combat. Get in with the germ. Opponent takes it. Yeah, pass the turn. Oh, we need like one more removal spell. Getting rid of the dry would be super helpful. Is this transmute? So this is just main phase transmute for a land? It is. Okay. Now well, let's see what they get. I wonder if it's worth blowing up a Valica. The Valicates are going to start hurting us. Like they will be a problem if we can't get rid of this Dryad. Forest. Aberreal Grazer is a blocker. I don't think our opponent has a land. Nope. Ah, oh, should we just blow up the Valica? Permeable Titan coming down would be super bad. We could just run out Wandering Emperor and tick down. Tick down, make a Samurai. We just want as much pressure as possible, really. Yeah, Wandering Emperor. Make a Samurai. Untap. Tick up on the Samurai. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Opponent. Blocks. Blocks. I'll play Cave of the Frost Dragon. Oh, get rid of a Valica. Get a Plains. All right, please don't Permeable Titan. Please, no land Permeable Titan. Please, please, please. About it. Draws. No lands? No lands. Three mana. <laughs> Another Dryad. Opponent passes. We draw. A Plains. Now play the land. Equip. Are they slow rolling a bolt? Yeah, dismember? All right, opponent dismembers. Fizzles the equip. Well, we will tick up on the samurai. Go attacking. Opponent takes it, goes to one. Pass the turn. No land from evil titan, no land from evil titan. Hold, oh, floating mana. Okay, explore, that means no Primeval Titan this turn though. That means no Primeval Titan. We can survive a Valakut trigger. Do we get there? Do we, do we prison him? Monoway prison? Whoa, taking down the, oh, we got the GG's. We got the GG's. We got the GG's. Whoa, okay. Well, Damping, maybe Damping Sphere is the new blood man. <laughs> it worked, it worked. Huh. These matchups are so scary. Primeval Titan matchups are so scary, but well, we got there. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are, ooh, there's the chalice. We're playing some mono white prison in modern, and I kind of like this hand. We had our saga that we're still figuring out. Is it good? It does make me want to revisit Amiria. I mentioned that before. Ah, oh, it seems so good in Amiria. It's been fine. It helps us hit our land drops. Not something you see much of in modern. It does have sweet art. The backside art's super sweet. Ah, oh, Kamigawa is such a good set. It's been a while since we've had a set that widely beloved, I think. Cave of the Frost Dragon, go. Yeah, we'll see what our opponent's doing and we can decide if we want a Chalice or Stoneforge. Some matchups Chalice on one is good. Some matchups Chalice on zero is good. The Cascade decks especially. Eldrazi. In some matchups Chalice does nothing. <laughs> Field of Ruins are nice though. Well, let's play the Plains and Stoneforge Mystique. And I think we just go for the gold here and grab Calder complete. Eldrazi usually doesn't have that much removal. Watch them go Eldrazi Temple 2, Thought Not Seer. Oh my God. Oh my God, the salt would flow. Our nemesis, Eldrazi Temple. You don't see it that much anymore, but oh my goodness, it's it's a soul land in modern. It's a soul land in modern. Magic's such an interesting game. When Eldrazi Temple was printed, it was kind of nothing. Like sure, you played it, but you were trying to ramp into Chalice on one. I think this means we just got to run out Calder complete. Waiting sounds nice. The problem with waiting is, little does our opponent know we were also a Chalice deck. The problem with waiting is it would give our opponent a window to thought not see her away the, the Calder complete, which would be really bad for us. Oh, mono black Eldrazi, interesting. All right, there's the thought not. Can take a restoration of Ejiano. Opponent passes. Another chalice isn't the best. Well, go to combat, smack ya. 
Uh, yeah, let's just planes. Our opponent can't Tron, so we might as well Restoration. Grab a planes. Is there any reason to play this on zero? Probably not. Mono black does make me a little nervous that our opponent could actually have an answer to Calder complete. Like this member does get the job done. And that is a spell our opponent could have. If we lose a Calder complete, this hand is not very good. Meta reshape uh, opponent gonna get in, go race mode. Sure. Well, we will discard a planes. Reanimate the planes. Play Field of Ruin. Blow up Eldrazi Temple. Get a Plains. Restoration number two. Get another Plains. I do like that Restoration can, can loop. This isn't gonna work, right? Gets exiled. Mm hmm. Pope Creature has plus five plus five. First strike trample, indestructible haste, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature. Oh my goodness, they could spin into Tron. Oh my God. Wow, that's actually a way we could lose. If that happens, I'm gonna be, shouldn't this be exiled? Shouldn't this be exiled? Am I misunderstanding? It dealt combat damage to matter reshaper. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature. So opponent blocked. I don't know, maybe I'm misunderstanding something. It's us with the thought knots here, we will take it. Please no Tron. Walking Ballista X2, sure. Gonna ping down the stone forge, sure. And opponent scoops it up. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something and it's not supposed to exile because it already died, maybe? I don't even know. Well, uh, Wrath of God in. Definitely silence, fragmentize, mind sensor. Mono black Eldrazi, interesting. So Chalice is definitely sketchy. Let's look at an Eldrazi Tron deck list. I'm curious if even mind sensor really does anything. So this won't be, uh, this won't be exactly our opponent's deck. Cause they have black mana, which I think is, is rare-ish. But I guess they just play a couple swamps. Do any of our cards do anything? So I guess Stony Silence does a little something. Damping Sphere, maybe we Damping Sphere? I don't usually like bringing in Damping Sphere against Eldrazi Tron, but we're kind of lacking other options. We gotta bring in something, cause Chalice of the Void is just essentially a dead card. I guess the other option is Stony Silence to shut down Expedition Map, but that's still... And I guess they probably have artifacts that they tutor up from the sideboard. Whatever, Mystic Forge, stuff like that. We don't really have any specific Planeswalker answers. Ratchet Bomb seems fine. Yeah, let's just, let's try it like that. I mean, let's just do that again. <laughs> Apparently Calder Complete is a pretty good clock. You just never know when Eldrazi Tron stumbles into Tron and gets you. Oh, this would be a greedy keep. Is this hand even good if we... If we draw land, we can plane cycle to get another land, and we got the Field of Ruin. Skyclaves are decent in the early game. Ratchet Bomb. Eh, we'll just mulligan. Well, uh, go, go, Stoneforge, Mystic, go. We will keep... How greedy is it to just snap put Damping Sphere to the bottom? How do we lose to this deck is the question. How do we lose? How do they actually beat us? And it's probably like mulliganing into Tron. The problem is I like all of our other cards. I want both Stone Forges in case they have removal. Skyclave answers a bunch of stuff. I mean, I guess we could be greedy and just put it. We're on the draw. You know what? Let's just put a... Put the planes to the bottom. I think that's fine. A little bit greedy if we never draw another land, but we can do a lot with two mana, like Stoneforge, Champing Spear, put stuff into play with Stoneforge. Urs is mine. Now, Amiria, go. If our opponent plays another Tron land, all right, well, I wanna be playing a Stoneforge, but we're gonna Damping Sphere. Just on the off chance that our opponent rolls into it. All right, makes a Scion. Wow! Oh, they did roll into it. Opponent goes to combat. Hits us for one. Thought not Sia. What do they take? Uh, now we do need to draw another, another land. This is actually kind of what we were talking about. Though there was a risk that we just don't draw the land. This is a really nice hand though. That's a handful of stuff. You can see our opponent having a hard time <laughs> choosing because uh, we have a lot of cards that are good. All right, takes the removal spell. Ratchet Bomb, not the most exciting. Well, we will Stone Forge Mystic or Calder Complete. Please no more Thought Not Seers. Opponent untaps. Expedition Map gets and hits us. I mean, I guess this could like get a Blast Zone that would get them out from under, under the Damping Sphere over the course of a couple turns. Yeah, all right. Plays a Blast Zone. Opponent does need two turns. 
A one, two, Stoneforge. Put Cauldra into play. Hit you for five. We need a field of ruin. That's what we need. Yeah, this land pinch is awkward. Yeah, let's pass and see what our opponent does. So they need to spend a turn ticking up the blast zone, and then they need to spend a turn sacking the blast zone. And then their reward is, yeah, let's do it. Let's pitch the Stoneforge, I think. Get rid of the Thought Knot. Field of Ruin, please. Rash <laughs> Double Ratchet Bomb, Eldrazi Temple. Another Thought Knot Seer. Well, this one's definitely taking the March Otherworldly Light, which could actually maybe kill the Thought Knot. This is one more turn without Blast Zone taking up, which is one more turn that we can try to draw Field of Ruin. I can't believe how good this Damping Sphere is being and how scared we are of losing it. Yeah, takes the removal. Oh my God, that's Field of Ruin. Okay, that is what we wanted to see. Go to combat, hit our opponent for five. Play Field of Ruin, pass the turn. Opponent. If our opponent plays like a reality smasher, then we probably get to start staying back on defense, which is a bummer. Karn, the great creator. All right, let's see what they're getting. Well, now we also got to try to deal with Karn. Takes down four. That ended up being a interesting game here. Ensnaring bridge. I mean, we do have answers to that eventually. Opponent passes. Well, I don't really need to blow up the blast zone yet. We draw another field of ruin. Well, go to combat. Attack the Karn. Opponent's going to block. We draw. Oh my god. Another ratchet bomb. So many ratchet bombs. Well, um, Stony Silence. Ratchet. Oh yeah, we can't play it. <laughs> yeah, ratchet bombs aren't gonna do anything. Awkward. Awkward, awkward running here. So now the bridge can come down and protect the Karn, which is the problem. We need to find an answer to the bridge. And we don't have one currently. Yep, takes up Karn. Because this Karn's gonna just keep tutoring. Opponent passes. Batter Skull. I'll go to combat, hit the Karn. So we need Skyclave Apparition, March of Otherworldly Light. Although we are down one of each. Although we are down one of each because of because of the thought knots. Do we blow up the tower? Yeah, blow up the tower. Just to be safe. Well, get the land, play the Ratchet Bomb. Not that we can use it. Pass the turn. All right, well, I mean, this is it. Can we find an answer? Oh, I'm an idiot. Wow, we ju I just punted this game. Well, did we just punt the game? Tapping out and letting our opponent use a Blast Zone was probably a mistake. Although they're off Tron, so does it actually matter? All right, so we get Blast Zone a bunch. I mean, that was, that was definitely a punt. A bonus. Matter reshaper. I mean, the only real question is, can we find a way to get rid of the Karn? That is, or get rid of the bridge to get rid of the Karn. That is the, the real question. All right, they kill our Cauldre complete. Yeah, now we're in trouble in a bunch of ways. Are we shame scooping? Maybe. Perhaps, perhaps the shame scoop. I'll blow up the mine. The problem is they can just, ah. The problem is they can just keep tutoring up finishers with Karn and we can't really, we can't really stop this at this point. Well, I'm gonna get yelled at for that one. My, my hatred for Tron blinded me. Is this a third Thought Not Seer? Ugh. Well, there goes our Batter Skull. And opponent takes down the Karn to get a liquid metal coating. So now they get to start eating our lands, yeah. Well, I guess the good news is that Ratchet Bomb really didn't matter because we we're just locked out of the game. Not an answer to Karn. Well, we'll play Restoration of Ajano. Grab a Planes. Play the Planes. Play the Ratchet Bomb that does nothing. Pass the turn. Urza's mine. Lots of mana. Big Boo Lista. Yep. Okay, gonna kill the Cave of the Frost Dragon. So we can get back. We can get back the Stony Silence to shut down the land destruction. Wow. Oh no, oh no, that's another punt. Okay, so our plan is we will not discard a card. We probably should have held onto the Ratchet Bomb. That's what I was saying was the, the other punt. We probably should have held onto the Ratchet Bomb and then we could have discarded it. But actually maybe this is fine because in reality, I think we, we are actually okay with this bridge living for the time being. This turns on our, our ratchet bombs. So hopefully we can use those to deal with the board. And I guess our game plan now is try to get to restoration. Although it still was probably a punt because it'd probably be better to, okay, takes up Ballista. I mean, this is gonna wreck us, right? 
Yeah, let's get rid of the ballista. I mean, maybe this worked. Ah, I don't know. If we had done it the other way, we'd be down one ratchet bomb, up one planes, which would be getting us closer to to turning on this Amiria. But what do we want to draw now? The problem is we know our opponent has huge planeswalkers to get to. Like we got through a Karn, but there's many more Karns that can be coming. All right, they're gonna kill this guy, Clave. Sure. And ping us. The opponent gets a token, which gets Wrath. Passing. Well, charge up Ratchet Bomb. We draw. Damping Sphere. Oh, flip the Saga. I mean, I guess we'll play it. Play the Damping Sphere. Pass the turn. Well, we've reached the stage of the game where nothing's really happening until someone draws something. Power Plant. Tick up the Ratchet Bomb. We draw. Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor is not bad. Opponent untaps. Oh, not Sia. We're not wandering emperor. Nothing in hand. The real question is, what are we trying to do with this ratchet bomb? And I'm not 100% sure the answer. Ooh, solitude. So we could blow the ratchet bomb. We lose restoration. The solitude is nice for now. So we lose restoration. Opponent would get a trigger off matter reshaper. Lose the bridge. Take up on the samurai. Yeah, let's pass. We can do this all during our opponent's turn. Pass the turn. This game's interesting now. Warping whale, make a scion. Well, it's interesting unless our opponent has like Ugin or something. If this if this is leading up to our opponent playing an Ugin, then then things are sketchy. Opponent. Urza Saga. Passing. Well, I think the time has come. Has it come? How big are the constructs gonna be? Not super big. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we draw off Solitude first. Play Solitude. Exile of Thought, not Seer, draw a card. It's a Planes. Oh, so we're like two Planes away? Maybe we should keep waiting for now rather than trying to go as aggro as possible. This Amiria turning on would be huge. Yeah, let's, let's wait, let's wait. See what we draw. Field of Ruin. Well, that's actually not bad. Field of Ruin. Blow up the Saga before it can do any work. Get a land. Tick up on the Solitude. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's wait one more turn. Let's pass the turn. And then on the end of our opponent's turn, I think we go for it. Opponent, passing. So we get to blow the Ratchet Bomb. Mattery Shaper, no whammies. Oh, Karn the Great Creator, okay. Well, we get to untap. I have planes. Calder complete. Solitude. Tick up on. Oh, actually, maybe we're making a dork. All right, go to combat. Hit ya. Opponent goes to nine. Make a samurai. So we know a Karn's coming. Oh, this is actually ridiculously close again. All these games have been so close. Opponent, through our puns, we're surviving somehow. So they can Karn and tutor up something. They have the liquid metal coating, but they're at risk of just straight up dying. I guess the upside for our opponent is they're probably thinking, okay, we can use the Karn to get rid of the Amiria. What our opponent doesn't know is we have this Wrath of God in hand, which theoretically can win us the game with this Solitude. Like if our opponent does things uh, like getting rid of the Amuria, we can just Wrath of God sweep the board. Our solitude's indestructible and, and hit our opponent for lethal. That's kind of what we're hoping for. Karn coming back is definitely annoying, but there's not a ton we can do about it. I mean, I guess we can kill it, but we'd rather try to kill our opponent given the given the choice. All his dust would be kind of brutal. That would be very brutal. That's probably the scariest. <laughs> Opponents think it. Huh, this deck has played some really just, these games have been so close. What are you doing? What are you doing, friend? The one of Amiria has been more relevant than I expected. Amiria is such a sweet card. Oh, it's so sweet. Gets overshadowed by Valakut from its cycle. And then the rest of the cycle is pretty bad, right? All right, here we go. Five mana. Well, he really got all his dust. Reality Smasher, okay. Karn. Oh, this is probably game. This is probably game. <gasps> okay, turns on liquid metal coating. Passes. Yeah, should do it. We untap. One, two, three, four. Indestructible. Wrath of God. <laughs> Draw a card. Go to combat. Nine ya. And got there. Taking down Eldrazi Tron. <laughs> I'm on a white prison. This deck's sweet. This deck's super sweet. We're grinding them out. 
<laughs> Punting our way to glory. Well, uh, we'll take it. That was another good one. Oh boy, we we're gonna try on our Miria too. Well, that was sweet. That was super good. Sweet, sweet. Much brew by nothing time. Playing some more mono white prison in modern. And uh, well, that's a very prisony hand. <laughs> oh, please be good, Chalice. Please be good. Please be good. Oh God, dead, dead. <laughs> oh, field of ruin. Okay, maybe not all the way dead, just mostly dead. I mean, we survived Eldrazi Tron, but now we gotta play against real Tron, and they're gonna have turn three Tron most likely, and our Field of Ruin's not gonna be fast enough? Wait, is this Eldrazi Tron again? Why is everyone playing Eldrazi Tron today? What in the world is going on to make everyone, to make everyone play Eldrazi Tron all of a sudden? I guess I did well at, <laughs> at a tournament recently. Maybe that's it? Well. There's probably really no point to playing Chalice now. Like Eldrazi Tron also plays Chalice. The basic swamp is the the giveaway that it's probably Eldrazi Tron. Awkward that we're playing it again. Although we did we did survive last time. This hand does not seem particularly well suited for Eldrazi Temple. Well, okay, opponent. Thought not see ya. Well, uh, tick it up. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I assume they take the restorations like kind of a real card. They probably take that. Well, the real scary thing is the planeswalkers. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. Ooh. Well, we could snipe this thought knot, but then what if they play Karn? You know what? I think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, it's a good draw. That is a good draw. Skyclave Aberration. Get rid of the thought knots here. Draw card. Okay, Stoneforge. We will accept a Stoneforge Mystic. That's also a good one. That's an actual finisher. Okay, things are looking up at the moment, maybe. Oh, the Chalice would have actually done something. <laughs> Another expedition map. Well, charge counter on the Ratchet Bomb. If they get a Tron land, we can blow up the Tron land. All right, so we're probably gonna blow up a Tron land here and play Stoneforge. How high can we get a Ratchet Bomb? <laughs> New challenge. <laughs> Rat. Oh my God, this Chalice would have done everything. Chalice looks like a dead card, but apparently it's not. Uh, well, Field of Ruin, blow up your tower. Opponent's going to exile it. Sure, 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 sure. Well, we'll snake a planes. Opponent gets a Schwamp, a Stoneforge Mystique. And I think we just take Caldera Complete. Hit you for two. Oh, I can't believe, this would have been the best Chalice ever against a deck that's trying to play Chalice on one. Opponent, gonna draw with the Relic. All right, well, I mean, we can deal with another creature. I guess if we get far enough ahead, then the Planeswalkers are less scary. Karn the Great Creators, oh my God. Oh my God, the Chalice would have done everything. It would have done literally everything. Ponic Cracks Expedition Map. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Eldrazi Temple, and what was this Thought Knot? This is gonna be interesting. Well, they either take Calder Complete and then lose Thought Not to Solitude, or they take Solitude and gotta be Calder Complete. Tough choice, actually. Wow, it takes a Solitude. Gonna try to play through the Calder Complete. Well, take up Ratchet Bomb. I guess we're going all the way now. Gonna see if we can <laughs> Ratchet Bomb away a Thought Not Seer, I guess. We draw Planes. We'll play the Planes. Stone Forge. Cauldra complete. Now we're, I mean, we're definitely not gonna play the, the Chalice now. They've used all the one drops. Hit ya, opponent. Takes it. Ratchet bomb. Go. No big planeswalkers. No big planeswalkers. Please, please, please. Land, six mana. They might have Dismember. Dismember would explain why they let us keep the Cauldra complete. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's slowly ticking up. Not too often you see a Ratchet Bomb get a four drop. Don't play Karn. Or on the Great Creator. All right. Well, this means we have to kill Karn. Oh, no, that was a mistake. Ugh, we should have ticked it up. Should have ticked up in response, I think. Although three is where Ensnaring Bridge comes down. The Pything Needle. Well, this is like Pything Needle into... It's another one drop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. They gotta name Cave of the Frost Dragon, I think. Or else it just snipes Karn. Well, this means we get to just attack down the Karn, I think. Hopefully. Another Chalice will play the land. Go to combat. Oh! They have a dismember. So now we can't kill the Karn and we can't equip? Oh no. 
Well, now we're in serious trouble until we top deck something. They play Chalice and try to put it on one. It's blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind how many one drops our opponents played. We could have just ran out of Chalice forever ago, but normally Chalice against Chalice decks is so bad. Now this feels bad, but I think we have to Chalice on two. Because that shuts down Karn from eating our lands. Yeah, this is taking a, a turn for the worse here. They get to tutor again. Yup. Sky Sovereign. Console flagship. Plays it. Gonna snipe our Skyclave. Well, we have like a turn to top deck an answer to Karn. That's what we need. Gets in with the Thought Knots here. Solitude doesn't do it. It's gotta be. We need like a Skyclave. Yeah, we can't cast that. Yeah, this one I think is over. Hmm, maybe putting Chalice on two. I don't know. Was that too greedy? The problem is if we don't Chalice on two, they just... Yeah, this is super... We're super dead. The problem is if we... <laughs> well, Chalice on two was apparently doing something as our opponent kills it, but yeah. Well, I guess you can't get Tron every time. I cannot believe how good that Chalice would have been. It blows my mind. It actually would have been super good. Well, okay. Damping Sphere, Stony Silence. Fragmentize. Wrath of God, maybe. What do we cut? Maybe a Ratchet Bomb or two. Like, Ratchet Bomb's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. If they have Urza Saga, it's good there. But as we saw there, they just have so many ways to, to wreck it. Like, their stuff is expensive, which is already tough for Ratchet Bomb. But then, almost, we almost got to blowing up the Thought Knots here, but then our opponent had the Karn. All right, well, we get to play first. Zero lands. Ah, oh, we're not going to keep that. All right. Well, I mean, this will keep, although this hand is not thrilling. Not thrilling at all. Land go. Well, go, go, Ratchet Bomb. Oh, Drowsy Trample cheating. Lands should only be allowed to make one mana ever. Ratchet Bomb, go. <laughs> judge, judge. Uh, well, we'll pass the turn. A boner done that. If this is a second Eldrazi Temple, Urza's Power Plant. And Silly Eldrazi won. Mattery Shaper. Uh-huh. Opponent passes. Well, play Field of Ruin. Blow up Eldrazi Temple. Get a Plains. We don't want our opponent to be able to Thought Not Seer this turn. Because next turn we can Wandering Emperor. And then we're getting close to the Solitudes. We like our hand, basically. That is the TLDR. We actually like our hand. Opponent gets and hits us. Down to 17. More Schwamps. More Mattery Shapers. Okay. Abunit passes. Planes. Go. All right, just don't, don't Thought Not Seer us. If we get to hard cast these Solitudes, we're in such sweet shape. But if they Thought Not Seer, it gets a lot worse. Abunit goes to combat. Well, we will Wandering Emperor. Snipe a Mattery Shaper. Are they going to kill it? Wow, is this like our opponent being desperate for a land? Wow. Okay. Dismembers their own thought, uh, Mattery Shaper to try to spin into a land, hits a Karn. Well, that is a future problem. All right. We drop to 14. Bulista. And pings down the Wandering Emperor. Yup. Well, now we're actually kind of hoping. Now we're kind of hoping that our opponent goes land Karn because we should be able to just solitude it away. Opponent, combat. I think we actually just take the damage here. Down to 11. Land. They got to play it, right? Karn. All right, this is what we wanted. This is what we wanted. Wow, they actually ticked up. Well, that is wise. Uh, Playing around the solitudes. Well, we'll solitude. Ah, oh, I thought by not flashing in during combat, our opponent might not do this, but they... They did. They saw right through. Well, go to combat. Hit the Karn. Play Amiria past the turn. We're actually not that far away from turning Amiria on. Well, hopefully these Solitudes can get through the Karn. I mean, I guess we're kind of in a good spot now because of Amiria, where if we keep drawing planes, that's kind of okay. And if we draw other stuff, that's also kind of okay. All right, going to take down the Karn. See if they go for the Sky Sovereign. If they do, yeah. Well, this means we probably have to just flash in the Solitude to kill the Karn, unfortunately, which is not, not what we want to be doing, but I guess we should wait. Officially, we should wait until the end step. Uh, Solitude number two. Nothing to exile. I guess non-Planes lands are awkward. So go to combat, kill the Karn. Batter Skull. Go. All right. What does our opponent have now? Reality Smasher. 
Oh, gonna crew. Okay. I mean, this is a decent amount of damage. The Sky Sovereign is annoying. So it gets to kill our Solitude. Well, we're going to charge up the Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb on five is actually looking, looking pretty sweet. All right, yeah, down to 11. We untap, we draw Stoneforge Mystic. I'll go to combat, hit our opponent. Stoneforge or Cauldra complete past the turn. I mean, we will Ratchet Bomb on five so quick if we get the shot. Reality Smasher and Sky Sovereign, that'd be so good. We can even bounce our own Batter Skull, <laughs> so we don't even have to lose that. Oh, that'd be so sweet. Very good at drawing, they have Power Plant Tron. Very good at drawing the Power Plants. Not very good at drawing the other Tron pieces. We're actually a land away from just hard casting Cauldra. All right, going to Crew, gets it. Snipes the Stoneforge, yup. So what's bad for us? Another another Karn the Great creator would be awkward because that's going to shut down the Ratchet Bomb. Or mana. That is a... Oh, come on now. Take up Ratchet Bomb. See what they do with the Karn. Oh, get a Pithing Needle the Ratchet Bomb? I guess we want to land. Oh, it gets a bridge. Okay. Land, maybe? Skyclave. Well, Skyclave also works. So go to combat. Attack Karn. Kill the Karn. Pass the turn. So now we can pick up our batter skull. Expedition map. Cracks it. So we can pick up our batter skull, blow up the fives. And then if we need to, Skyclave away the, the bridge. Tony is inching towards Tron, which is a little scary. Ensnaring bridge. Now, one, two, three, pick up batter skull. Blow the ratchet bomb. Well, that was a, that was a pretty good ratchet bombing. Ooh, solitude. Uh, yeah, replay batter skull. Pass the turn. Little risky, because if they draw Thought Knot and get rid of our Skyclave, then I don't know how we're getting rid of this bridge. Oh, God, that's a lot of mana. Ugin the Ineffable takes down, takes up to draw a card. All right, all right, all right. Opponent passes. Laundering Emperor. Um, this is awkward. This is giving our opponent oh, so much time to assemble Tron, and now they're drawing extra cards. Yes, is not the best. Or they will be drawing extra cards with these tokens. Oh, jeez, another Karn. Okay. Oh, that's tough. Triple, triple Karn is that is real tough. Real, real tough. Gets a liquid metal coating. Jeez. Okay, even more Karns. I guess the Ugin Ram's pretty good. Oh, no! Oh! That means Tron is coming right now. Opponent gonna draw a card, gonna go to combat. Oh, is there any way out of this? Not feeling very confident, honestly. Well, Solitude. Get rid of a spirit. Opponent draws the card. Liquid metal coating on a land. Uh, sure. Well, we draw planes. Skyclave. Get rid of the bridge. We're fighting the good fight, but our opponent just has all the mana now. Uh, well, we gotta try to get rid of the Karn the Great Creator again. Opponent blocks. All right, opponent lets it go. Well, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Uh, something like all this does would be really bad. Opponents just got, they got all the mana and all the cards now. I I've learned from Commander. Your opponent having all the mana is one, oh. your opponent having all the mana is one thing. Your opponent having all the cards is another thing. When your opponent has both, <laughs> that's where things go bad really quick. Like our opponent casually tapping 16 manas. Is this just like Ballista as a Plague Wind? <laughs> Ballista X9. And that means Big Ugin's coming? Yeah, I have no idea how we, how we have any shot of getting back into this. Uh, Wandering Emperor. Make a Samurai. Untap. The Ballista just shoots down our entire board. And then our opponent plays Karn. Or takes down Karn and gets Ugin. And then we lose. That's a big Ballista. As good as March is, it can't hit Planeswalkers. Do we have any line here that does anything? Uh, Calder Complete. Living Weapon. Take up. I mean, I think we literally just have to swing everything at Karn Cyanaverza. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, we proved we could beat this deck once, but second time, yikes. Good old, I mean, that was, that's what Eldrazi Trom dreams about. You hit Tron, you play five Planeswalkers, Ballista for 16 mana. That game, our opponent, they did what they wanted to do. I mean, really, it comes down to Karn the Great Creator, I think. Like, three Karn the Great Creators, eh, it's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Not to mention Ugin and Ugin, or Karn, another Ugin about to come down. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some Mono White Prison in Modern. Oh God, hammer time, hammer time. Okay, we have, we have, we got Roger Bomb. We're good, we're good. Oh no, are we gonna be dead before we're good? Chalice on one would also be good. All right, well, hopefully, hopefully they just try to hammer this Ornithopter and we can march it and then we're happy. Chalice on one also seems reasonable. Esper Sentinel. Uh, sure, that's fine. Gets in. Are we getting hammered? Yes. Well, I don't like that our opponent gets to draw a card off this, but I think it's a necessary evil. Yeah, we can't pay the one, but we, we can't pay the one, but we can kill the Ornithopter. So Ornithopter down. More Ornithopters, passes. Wandering Empire. Oh, this Esper Sentinel is so obnoxious. There are ways we just die here, but we're gonna play a Plains. We can Chalice on one, but then our opponent gets to draw a card. Ratchet Bomb. I think we gotta YOLO it. Yeah, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy all your free cards, Esper Sentinel. <laughs> Oh, one mana divination so far. Soon to be Ancestral Recall on a body. Are we dead? Oh my, you really have second hammer in hand. Really? That's that's the draw? That's the draw? That's what's happening here? Opponent tags with everything. We do not have a solitude. Oh, jeez. Come on, Magic God. Oh. I think we played that the best that we could. Yeah, I mean, I think we played that the best that we could, and it's just unfortunate that our opponent had double hammer. <laughs> I think that's the, the TLDR, like, I think that was right. I don't know. Like, the thing is, basically, so we dealt with the Ornithopter, opponent got to draw a card, but we can't just take 10, because then we die in two turns. Then the next turn, when we played the Ratchet Bomb, the other option was what? Play a Stoneforge and we're still dead? The only downside is our opponent gets to draw a card, but we play the Ratchet Bomb, and if our opponent doesn't kill us there, then we just, we have the hard wrath of their board. Unfortunately, we, we lost the die roll. Winning the die roll would have been helpful. That would have been helpful. Uh, so I feel like this is our dream matchup. Like <laughs> other than that happening where our opponent has like the double hammer on the play dream draw, I feel like, I feel like we just have everything that you want to beat this deck. Almost too much stuff. Like Stony Silences could be fine. Good even. But can we even find room for him? Yeah, let's bring him in. All right, run it like that. Going on a couple uh, Restoration Vajanos. Good news is we're on the play for game number two. Also, secondarily, good news. Unlikely our opponent has that hand again. That hand was, that hand was something else. Go, go, Chalice of the Void on turn two. Prison, Mono White Prison. Land, go. Up and it untaps. Mm, planes, Spring Leaf Drum. And passes. I'll play the land. Chalice on one. Pass the turn. We would like to keep drawing lands. Opponent, Urza Saga. Stoneforge, oh jeez. Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Nettle Cyst. Okay, we draw lands, so we get to play Stony Silence. March away the Urza Saga. I mean, this is a pretty good turn. March being able to hit Urza. Oh, the dumbest, the dumbest. Oh boy, there will be yelling. Oh no. Yeah, I mean, technically, <laughs> that's the one scenario where March is technically one mana. Oh no, they were not pleased. Opponent passes. All right, Ratchet Bomb. That is not one mana, although we have a Stony Silence. Hmm, maybe this, uh, maybe this Stony Silence leads to some non bows. <laughs> Found it. Makes a construct. Untaps. Wow, our life would have been. So much better had we uh, killed that. The funny thing is, we could have overpaid too. Oh, yeah, we could have just pitched a Wandering Emperor and overpaid. 
Ginger. Oh my God, they have another one. Oh well. Uh, Wrath God, please find us. Pona gets in for a million. Yeah, we're super dead. Land? No, March Otherworldly Light. Well, we've learned some lessons about that card. I mean, I guess if we're never going to draw land, this doesn't matter anyway. I guess the way this is playing out, I don't think any of our puns actually actually mattered. The hilarious thing is I feel like our deck should actually be, should actually be really good in this matchup. Like this should be like the dream matchup for it. So I think maybe. <laughs> okay, well, I... <laughs> I feel better about the chalice punk because they this is just the hottest running uh the hottest running hammer deck in the history of hammers. Yeah, that's that's just game. Well, okay. I mean, so our punts didn't matter. I, I could take the the punts in the comments. I wonder if we should not be bringing in Stony Silence. Is that the is that the answer? Like Ratchet Bomb's good, or it, like is this a is this a non bow? Is this a deck building mistake? Is it a sideboarding mistake? It's an interesting question. Like Stony Silence is good and it was doing things, but then it's also locking down our stuff. Well, that was an interesting end. <laughs> An interesting end of the league. I mean, it wouldn't be a, a much brew without casting at least one spell into our chalice. I mean, that that's a sign of a good prison deck. If, if you don't get yourself with your own chalice at least once, are you even really playing prison? I would argue no. <laughs> and uh, and we still end with a 3-2, so we get a, we get a treasure chest. Although a little disappointing after a 3-0 start. Although, like I said, uh, obviously... I'm not saying it wasn't a pun. It was clearly, no doubt about it. Anytime you just uh, accidentally cast a spell into your chalice, it was a pun. Although, uh, the way that Hammer Time deck was running and the way we got stuck on lands, it really wouldn't have mattered. The real pun, if there was one, and we are going to crack this treasure chest, the real pun, if there was one, I maybe was bringing in Stony Silence. Maybe that's not worth it. Because if we had the Ratchet Bomb active to get rid of the Urza Saga tokens, yeah, maybe we just can't bring in Stony Silence in, in matchups where we want Ratchet Bomb. Although the awkward thing is, a lot of those matchups are the same. Like, Ratchet Bomb's good against Hardened Scales or Affinity or whatever. Uh, that, uh, but you also want the Stony Silence. I guess maybe Urza Dex? Maybe that's the matchup we're going to bring it in? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's open our chest. See if we get something, uh, something sweet. One of one. Cultivator of Blades. A disappointing card. I mean, I guess it's a, how disappointing can it be as a five mana, five mana one one, but never really caught on anywhere. It can pump your team quite a bit and you can fabricate it into a three three, but yeah, a little, a little too slow, a little too fragile, but well, that is Mono White Prison. <laughs> That was a wild league. We played some really close, grindy, ridiculous games, and then we put it a couple times, and then we kind of got snowballed in those last ones. So I guess let's just let's just do our wrap up here. Why why not? So what did we learn about the deck? I mean, the deck felt really good. I'm still a little sad that we lost to Hammer Time because I feel like Hammer Time. Just looking at this list, it reads like a list of the cards that you would want against. <laughs> against a hammer time deck like literally if you could construct like oh what would be good against that solitudes march chalice skyclave raz wandering emperors it really reads like it uh so i don't know how we managed to lose that one the tron matchup like we lost one we won one yeah, that sounds about that sounds about right. Like it's probably a 50 50 type thing so i feel like the deck is it's definitely interesting uh, it's not as hard locky prison as like mono red prison because you're not gonna have the blood moons uh, and so forth. But we got to see Chalice be really key in a lot of matchups. We got to see Ratchet Bomb be good when we're not stony silencing it out of existence. We got a ton of good removal. Maybe the most interesting card is honestly Restoration of Vigano. Like this is a card that is maybe most intriguing. It makes, I said this during the league, but it makes me want to play, it makes me want to play uh, Amiri again. I know we just played it on stream. Is this card actually good enough? I think the idea is that it lets us trim back on lands a little bit. If you look at our mana base, we only got 23 lands, which is a bit light for a deck with, you know, five drops and a bunch of four drops. I would think you'd probably want to be like one more maybe. On the other end, we got Timeless Dragon, which never really showed up and did anything. Uh, we cycled it once when Rest in Peace, <laughs> Peace was out. Another nice little non-bow, uh, but it never really showed up. Uh, but that's the way we can find lands. Restoration of a Jano finds land. Getting back Field of Ruin is kind of relevant. So maybe it's good enough. The backside is fine, although it is a little bit slow by the time it turns into a creature. We got to see like against the, the Is It Murktai deck when there's like a Ragavan down and you're playing this and like, oh, we got a blocker. 
three turns from now. Look out, Ragavan. A little bit, a little bit slow, but I like the deck. If you like prison strategies, but are looking for a non-Blood Moon style deck, I feel like this deck actually, it was better than I expected it to be. It felt reasonable. It felt competitive. It's got a ridiculous amount of good removal. It's got a pretty good plan for closing out the game with Stoneforge and the Batter Skull and Cauldra complete. Chalice of the Void's really good right now. Solitude needs no introduction. That card's obviously super, super good. So if you're someone who wants to play a prison strategy, but doesn't want to play Blood Moon, or you want to play a control deck, but you don't like leaving your mana up to try to counter spells, this seems like a pretty fun option for the format. Although I will admit, it does kind of make me want to play Amiria decks. I just, I love playing Amiria so much. Seeing that one Amiria and the synergy with Restoration, and even as a one of them, Amiria was relevant sometimes, even though we did have trouble getting up enough lands. I can see why it's a one of in this deck, because we had a lot of games where we were like, Amiria in five planes, Amiria in six planes, and just short of turning it on. But I like the deck. So if you want a different take on Prison and Modern, I would recommend it. Don't cast spells into your own chalices. Uh, and be aware of the non boos That's the other thing that came up a couple of times. Stony Silence, Ratchet Bomb can be a bit of a non bow Timeless Dragon, rest in peace. Not that that's a deal breaker, but that can be a bit of a non bow as well. So there were some of these weird anti-synergies. Chalice of the Void and <laughs> apparently March of Otherworldly. Like, in my defense with the Chalice play, the deck is built to not have anything that can be countered by Chalice. So normally when you play a deck like this, a prison deck, at least for me, I just think, okay, my chalice doesn't do anything to me. If I put my chalice on one, I don't even have to think about it. It's going to be fine. But there is one exception, which is literally March of Otherworldly, like getting a zero drop. That is the one, the one thing that you can possibly cast for one mana in this entire main deck. So I think I just tricked myself into thinking, eh, chalice doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Chalice on one, completely harmless to us. When technically there is a way for it to be harmful, it doesn't come up that all that often, but it does come up on occasion so just be aware of those little synergies be aware of the sideboarding stuff but the deck's good it's fun it's slow and grindy but seems pretty powerful so anyway that's mono white prison that's been our much improved for this week thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon